So, it is official. Joshua versus Otto Wallen from Sweden, a very talented guy, whom of course busted Fury up and was supposed to win that fight. We all know if the reverse were to be was was the case, Otto Wallen would have been uh, stopped by the referee. But because Fury always have some sort of um, advantage and some sort of he's been favored basically by the judges by the referees and stuff like that and he got away with that now after the joshua fighting a guy a south paul let's keep it real a south paul joshua is not really like a style against south paul is a very i uh, don't know no, he oh, he kind of have problems with south paul I, I would say that but him taking this fight is a very dangerous fight it's a fight that Otto Wally can win you know, we don't know, uh, like, the version of Otowale that will show up, but we know that Otowale has been very active, and he's, he has one loss, and I, I would say, in my opinion, that fight with Fury should have been a draw. Like, basically, Fury has so many uh, undeserved wins, you know, wins in his career. Is it a McDermott one? Is it the Francis Gano one? Is it the Otowale one? Listen, man, Fury... Fearing bubble has been bought, has been busted. So let's get to it right here. Let's go about on here. Uh, Adewale to give you a stake. Adewale, Joseph, so Wale, yes, this is of course part of the Saudi Arabia card. I think it's called the uh, Rehard season. Um, but we're going to talk about this fight, we'll talk about the whole card for sure. And of course, let's not forget that uh, the Ontario Bronze Ball Water is also on that card. And we'll talk about that card in a whole, but right now we'll focus on. Joshua versus Wallen. How does this fight? How does this fight play out in your opinion? And what do you make of this, the event, um, and the whole like to put all these guys together? There's a lot of money here. Tell you right now, Saudi Arabia is really gonna be in the future if they continue, uh, uh this uh improvement in their sport. We're thankful to the Saudi people for putting that card together. Not all of us like certain things about certain people, but when credit is due, then we have to give credit. So without the Saudis involvement in the heavyweight division, it was already, you know, it was, it wasn't moving anywhere. Nothing was happening in 2023. We've not had any major significant, significant fight. Um, maybe the, maybe Osik Dubois was the most prominent fight of 2023 or fury ungano that just lets us know the state of the heavyweight division it's not been moving so the fact that we could have so many top 10 talents put together on the same card man nobody has ever seen that i i, I, I i'm not listen man i only started watching boxing like 10 years ago and in my 10 years of watching boxing this has nothing close to this has ever ever happened so yes, shout out to the Saudi people. Shout out to Anthony Joshua and Otto Wallin. Um, in all fairness, AJ is the A side in this situation. So he has more opportunities to pick and choose his opponent. And the fact that he accepted to fight Otto Wallin in a short notice, man, I have to give the guy respect because Otto Wallin is not a slouch. Yeah, Otto Wallin can actually beat AJ. It'll be difficult. AJ is still the favorite because he's a, I mean, he's a better boxer. He's stronger than AJ than Otto Wallin. I, I don't think he would have any fears or any worries with Otto Wallin. I believe that fight will most likely go to distance and AJ winning on points. But I hope AJ doesn't let a fight close. If it's a close fight, Otto Wallin will be robbed. The victory will be given to AJ because of the money factor but i would if i could speak to aj i would encourage him to make sure you separate yourself in that performance don't stink up the place don't give fans the opportunity to say that oh you robbed otto Wallin. no don't let that happen go in there and impose yourself on otto Wallin. have no fears of the guy he doesn't punch hard so go there set up that right hand He's a lefty, he's a southpaw. Your straight right hand will land on the target. That's what I have to say about that. 
Science, but I appreciate your take on this. Let's go around here. Yeah, Mayo Joe to give you steak. Mayo Joe, what do you make of Joshua fighting Otto Wallin? It is, it is a dangerous fight. We know already. Yes, 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 sir. Um, it's really good to be back on um, BBC. It's good to have you here again. Thank you for all you do. Now, as regards this fight, I I totally agree with everything that you already said. Um, first of all, just like everyone is doing now, I'd like to thank Turkey Al Ashley for allowing the heavyweight division to come back to life because he was he was he was dying, man. He was really really dying. Like <laughs> you know, throughout this year, we've only had the Dubois against Usyk fight. And Sorry to interrupt, bro. I think uh, Fury killed the heavyweight division. Well, he did. Of course, he it, did. His inactivity, you know, unpredictability that the guy, like, he just, I find not that, just that the guy doesn't really, I don't know, man, just, he killed the hype. It's the reason why I don't, in boxing, I don't like the idea of having too many belts because obviously when the belts are tied up, then or the only options you're going to have as a champion would be to defend. And Fury wasn't even defending anyway. And um, he was meant to have fought. Um, Fury was meant to have fought, you see, but he didn't. And he kept, you know, dodging and kept playing games and all that. Anyway, and I'm sure we're going to come back to that conversation later. But I really, really am grateful that this how they came in. Um, although, I don't know if this is sustainable, obviously, <laughs> for obvious reasons. I don't think they can continue to pump in all that money into, into boxing. Because it's a lot of money they pump in. Um, I've been watching boxing as well for maybe about 15, 15 years there about, and I've never ever ever seen a card like the twenty third of December card. That is a crazy, crazy card. It's, I don't even think that that has happened in the history of boxing before. It's never happened, honestly. It's a crazy card. You have almost everyone in there in the heavyweight division, besides um, Andy Ruiz, who just came back from from a surgery, and obviously you see Ken Fury. But other than those three guys, everyone is almost there. So I really give it up to them. Now, Joshua Wallen. Hmm. Big kudos to Joshua for taking this fight, honestly. It's not, to me, the way I see Wallen, right? Um, good fighter, but I give him a six in everything. Um, a six in power, maybe even five in terms of the power department. Um, skills maybe seven, um, movement maybe about seven as well. So, the way I'm looking at this, right, I'm like, okay, what does Otto Wallen, what does he do better than AJ? You know, in what department is he really better than AJ? And I'm looking at all the departments and I'm like, AJ moves better than him, um, AJ is way stronger, punches harder. I think AJ is more skillful as well and more talented, naturally talented than Wallen. Yes, Wallen has been fighting way longer before AJ, but um, AJ is, I think, is more talented. And also, AJ fought him twice before. I think that would also give him confidence that, okay, I fought this guy twice before. I beat him the two times. He was my sparring partner. I know maybe not everything about him, but I do know quite a bit about him. And I think that that will give AJ some kind of confidence going into that fight because it's one thing when you are fighting someone you've never ever fought before, you know, you don't know what to expect. All you can rely on will be, you know, fight footages and stuff like that. But in terms of Otto Wallen, he's fought this guy twice before and he beat him the two times as well. And besides that, Otto Wallen... Before the Fury fight, no one knew about Otto Wallen. No one was talking about Otto Wallen, you know. And then all of a sudden, he gave Fury a tough fight, and then everyone is talking about Otto Wallen. I watched his fight against Gassiev, and I'm like, yes, it was a decent performance, but I don't see anything fantastic. I actually did watch the whole fight, and I'm like, AJ in there with Gassiev, AJ would have probably knocked him out based on the performance on that last performance anyway so as much as it is a very very um it is a tricky one it is a tricky challenge 
I really do not see what Warlane would do. If it goes the distance, they're going to give AJ the this, this decision anyway, regardless. And I think AJ has the capacity to knock him out. Because Warlane does gas out as well. In towards the middle, like mid, I'd say from around round 7, round 8, round 9, he does really gas out, even worse than AJ. In the, and the last two, three fights have shown us that AJ has improved tremendously in terms of his gas tank. So Wallin does gas out. Look at his fight against Brazil. Dominic Brazil. He did gas out. Even his last fight against um, Garcia. He did gas out. So he's going to have to be moving a lot as well. I don't think AJ is going to be afraid of his power at all. At all. And AJ is taller than him. About, I think about one inch taller. So I think that AJ is probably going to take the fight to him. Maybe box for the first three, four rounds. And after that, he's going to take the fight to him. Um, I don't see, I mean, obviously you can't be 100% sure what's going to happen in a fight. You can't really tell what the outcome is going to be. However, I do think that AJ has got his number. Um, like I said, he's fought him before twice. He spared many rounds with him. He knows him in and out. And AJ looks upset, looks angry. He has a point to prove. Um, yeah, I think I think AJ is going to be him. And I think it's going to be a knockout around the ninth or the 10th round. That's what I think. Well, one thing I will say that, of course, Joshua does have play with uh, South Paul, you know, so we'll see how it is. How but remember, remember, Josh, yeah, we, we keep saying Joshua has problems with South Pauls. Everybody has problems with South Pauls, okay? Even South Pauls have problems against each other. I'll give you an example. So, Terence Crawford fight both South Pauls, Pauls I mean, South Paul and Autodos. But then when he fought, um, when he fought Ross Pence, he decided to go southpaw and give Errol Spence, who is a natural southpaw. It gave him problems. So southpaws are they give problems to anyone, really. So in my opinion, you can't compare Walling's level of skills, skills level. You can't compare it with Usyk. Usyk is people. People don't know how good Usyk is. You're gonna see against Fury. That fight against Fury, people will see how good Usyk is. People will understand how difficult it is to fight that guy. It's not only because he's sad, but the guy is just good. He's a natural, he's talented, he's a boxer. He's like one of them footballers where they don't need to learn how to play football. Growing up in Nigeria, I saw a lot of guys where they never learn how to play football, but they are just good. They are just natural. That's what Usyk is. Usyk is natural. So I don't think Wallin is on that level at all. Not even close. And Wallin, I mean, Joshua, his fight is two fights against um, Usyk and his one fight against, um, I want this at like a god. Um, what's his name? Charles Martin. Uh, Charles Martin would have prepared Joshua well enough, man, to face Wallin. I remember Joshua fought Usyk twice recently. So I think it's ready, man. I don't think Wally is going to be too much of a problem. Honestly, I don't think so, in my opinion, anyway. That's all I've got to say for now. Ties, what I appreciate your take on this. This guy on here. Uh, Ty Jagwe to give his take on the Joshua Otto Wallen fight. Ty Jagwe. Yes. Yeah, you broke down this fight, bro. <clears throat> okay, well... Um... You know, I like what everybody has said so far. Let's be honest, man. You know why boxing is at a standstill? It's because of Mauricio Suleiman. He is the he's the reason boxing is at a standstill, and maybe especially in the heavyweight division. But in general, he is the reason why. Because one, you do not as a as a president of a of an entity, you don't go around choosing sides. You do not do that. Don't go around favoring fighters. You do not do that. As a as a as a as an entity, it's more to be you're you're inclined to actually have these fights, these fights be made or these fighters be stripped of the belts. You don't go around saying, "Oh, did, uh, yeah, you know, Tyson Fury doesn't have to do this. He doesn't have to do." No, no. It's either he fights or gets stripped. That's that's why these fans are tired and they don't want to continue paying. For bullshit fights when it when it happens and that francis ungano fight you know god bless francis i'm glad he made the money but that that was a bullshit fight and this is what happens when that when, 
this is what you get when that happens. And now he's like, oh crap, Tyson Fury fucked up. I have to say this as a president, and I have to put Francis Ngannou in in the top ten in in, in the in the top ten. That's what he was thinking. I have to make money off of what Tyson did because Tyson looked like crap. You know, even the Saudis are pissed. But I'm pretty sure the Saudis are pissed at Tyson because they had a they had a date set, and now Frank Warren had to call Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn, you know, had to call had to call a uh, uh, PBC to get Deontay Wilder, or they they must thank AJ and Wilder for that. It's not it's not it's not Frank Warren. It, they must thank AJ and Wilder for that because if the, if it wasn't for AJ, man, a P, they, they, these they, they can't just bring anybody in there. Now they brought AJ and Wilder and a solid card underneath. That is a solid card, and that's how box that's how that, that's how boxing should be. But Mauricio Suleiman has no excuse. He's the, he's been the guy that's been messing up this whole heavyweight division and the other division as as of late. He, he, he just loves to choose sides, and now he he's going on a rant saying um, about the Ring Magazine how how, how it's bad for uh, for 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 boxing apparently like that. But for some reason he forget that he's made up a couple belts. Himself. He's made up for made up couple belts, you know. And has yet to stop choosing sides. He needs to stop that. It's bad for boxing. But let me die. let me go back to the main topic. Um, you know what? Otto Wally versus Anthony Joshua. This, I I have to say, I hold Anthony Joshua to a higher standard when it comes to fight fights like Otto Wally. But let me tell you this, man. I don't know if people were projecting their fear onto AJ or you know they're trying to make that guy seem like. You know, it, it's always gonna look like that for some reason. I, I don't know what is what. I feel like hey, the AJ fan, the AJ hate, the fans that hate AJ are extremely weird. I don't know what it is. You know, you can't say you see something in a guy that I simply do not see, and I'm a fan of this. You know, it's funny because now they say AJ looks scared. No, dude, that guy does not look scared. I, I don't know. I don't get the the issue. They keep saying he's scared. The guy doesn't look scared. The guy doesn't look nervous. Whatever distraction you're trying to do, it's not working. The distraction is not there. You know, always trying to distract somebody from trying to do something. But to me, that guy looks focused, and he looks focused at the task at hand. He's not gonna jump into petty, petty uh, scribble squabble, but going back between Wilder and, and Darrell, uh, Big uh, Big Baby Miller. Yes, you can clearly see that Big 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 Baby Miller got under his skin, and I. I and, I, I simply cannot stand what the the the, um, the Queensberry for whatever that guy's name is that, that Indian guy Dev Devin something I cannot stand that guy and AJ I'm glad AJ said something Eddie Hearn should be the one asking the questions not that guy and I'm glad he said something and, and you, you know what's you know what's funny now that now that AJ has dictated like I would not fight Big Baby Miller I wouldn't fight him he does not deserve any money people saying oh he He's good for boxing. This is that's the issue. That is the issue right there. The drug cheat is not good for boxing. Those guys should not be nowhere trying to make any type of money. Imagine if 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 if, if um if White Dylan White comes back and says the same thing. People are gonna be pissed. No, Joe Miller's done. I wouldn't give that guy an opportunity if if, if it was there. He, I, I, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna give him an opportunity no matter what because I wouldn't give him an opportunity. It won't be like that. Not like an Andrew Ruiz. Where's Andrew Ruiz right now? Nowhere to be found. Okay? He should be he should be in this card. Andrew Ruiz should be in the Saudi Arabia card. But he's not he's nowhere to be far found. He hasn't been taking care of himself. He's been talking shit. Okay? He ducked wilder, that's for sure. But uh back, back, I, I, let me go back to the topic. But between Otto Wally and, 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 and Anthony Joshua, I think I think AJ, I hold a high standard to AJ. AJ has fought a good South Pole. And I and I honestly believe him find that good south for and being able to you know going up on a card and being able to actually do what he did against a good south for like of a of a of a caliber like that Usyk I think his I think when 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 we saw that video of him smashing those pads we all knew what he what he what what his uh, where his mindset is after after uh, after getting back off um the interview he went straight to Ben Ben Davis and started smashing pads you all know what he's gonna do he's not gonna box. That's for sure. He ain't gonna box. He's gonna be. He's gonna go in there and really beat the crap and really put 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 the steam put the steamroll on uh, uh, Otto Wally. 
because it all it worked for him with the first fight with uh I, I believe it was the first fight with uh with Usyk compared to the second fight where I think he tried to box more I I can't even remember but the first fight Usyk had a lot more damage compared to the second fight so it was I, the other way it was the other way oh okay yeah yeah so I think he Usyk had, he, he did more damage so I think it'll be it'll it'll, fit, it'll come in his favor if he if he if he stuck to his old ways and you know Otto Wallin hasn't changed other than he's very good you know he he's he shoots the jab a lot a lot he he really shoots the jab a lot you know so i mean aj is going to just going to have to keep pairing those jabs and he still has the right hand open right he's he's going to have to keep controlling the jab with it, with with the left and try to move out the way but it in it in all like it's going to be where they left off in the in the, in the amateurs you know or where they left off when they were, when they were fighting when they were fighting in the ring as a uh, you know as as um you know pe- prospects you know so i i personally believe i i, I hold aj to a higher cap standard and i think aj should be able to get this done i think it's going to end in a knockout uh, i i do believe aj has gained more confidence and we're going to a different side of aj and i honestly believe it's not going to go the distance it's going to go to a knockout for and the deciding factor is going to be aj you know it all depends on what aj wants to do uh, going back to Ben Davison, you know, the guys, the guys good. He's trained a lot of seas. He's trained a lot of southpaws. <coughs> you know, I uh, I would think I would think uh Derek James would be in the corner and so would Ben Davison, but I guess it, it's not how it works. Maybe he's maybe um Derek James has a lot, you know. He does have a lot of fighters. A lot of very uh, he has a lot of good fighters. Um Ryan Garcia is in there, you know. Ryan Garcia has a he's training. I think he has a fight coming up. You know, he's he's probably working on Errol Spence. It's too much. That's way too much, you know. So AJ had to go to Ben Davidson. Like, hey, it is what it is. You know, hopefully Ben Davidson can come out with a good plan and let's let we can go from there. You know, I, I I trust him. At the same time, I don't trust him. But it all depends on what AJ shows up and let's see how it goes, man. I'm not gonna make any prediction until I, until towards the towards the end. Sometimes, but I appreciate your take on this, guys. You heard it from our brother, Todd Jagway, Adi Wally, and of course, Mario Joe.